What a week in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Democratic National Convention. A lot more color than it was in Tampa, and I'm not talking about the grass. I was on the floor for three great political speeches, and with Friday's jobs report, will the convention and the speeches affect the election? We'll talk about the jobs report with Labor Secretary Hilda Solis later in the show. But right now, let's get to the political impact of all these factors with our Washington Watch Roundtable. Joining me is a newbie to our panel, Joan Walsh, editor-at-large for Salon.com. We will haze her appropriately on this show. We have Armstrong Williams, political commentator and host of the Armstrong Williams Show, who normally has a pocket square, but he screwed up this week. <laughs> There's political scientist Wilmer Leon, host of Inside the Issues on Sirius XM Radio. He desperately needs one. His stitching probably is not even popped in his pocket. And Steve Clemens, Washington editor at large for The Atlantic. Uh, Steve, uh, you get a reprieve. I need y'all to get a shot of Steve's socks because he got a little creative this week with the socks. So he gets a reprieve from being chastised by me. Nice. But damn, he needs a tan. All right. Let's get, let's get right to it. Um, Michelle Obama, President Bill Clinton. Vice President Biden, uh, President Obama, you throw in Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver, you throw in Jennifer Granholm. Uh, strong week for the Democrats Absolutely. at the convention. Absolutely. I was in Tampa and I was in Charlotte, and there was no comparison in the level of excitement. I mean, Republicans very much want to defeat this president, but they are not in love with their candidate. Those people in Charlotte are in love with their candidate and with their whole roster of stars. And, you know, John Lewis gave an amazing speech. Mm -hmm. I mean, the speeches that weren't prime time were riveting. We're, we're holding people in their chairs much more than it, in Tampa. People were drinking and m milling about. And ex I shouldn't say that, but they were uh, <laughs> un until, you know, the, until the big speech, whatever the one big or two big speeches were. And uh, that wasn't true. Also, uh, I made the point on Twitter that uh, not jealousy that's evil or whatever, but I do believe the Republicans really wish they had a living president who could come out and bring the stature to their convention. Obviously, President George H.W. Bush, health concerns, why he's not out there. President George W. Bush, too toxic for the GOP. There's always something about having a living president from your party able to address your convention to be able to bring that sort of statesman role. And Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton, I think, served it, served it very well uh, when he spoke. Well, uh, President Obama needed that given his credibility among the people that will decide. So why did he vote. need it? Because remember, President Clinton spoke in 2008. So it's not like this was like a shocker or something. Um, President Clinton did a very good job, as history would tell, navigating the economy, compromising with Republicans, passing welfare reform, and balancing the budget. You cannot ignore that. He has credibility as a president. Right. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, you're right. The, um, the Republicans were not having a love affair with Mitt Romney in uh, Tampa. I was at both conventions because you know what? The American people are not having a love, love affair that's going to really decide this election with any candidate. If you notice, no matter how many speeches, great speeches are given at both conventions, there's still a dead heat, dead lock. Actually, actually on that point, Gallup released their, their, their showing two to three point bounce. We didn't see that last week. That says something about how effective the Democrats were this week. Oh, they, I think they were really uh, very, very effective here. And there could be a little bit of slippage. I think what was interesting when I listened to President Clinton on the floor is you heard someone walk through all the reasons why Americans should be proud of what Barack Obama has achieved. And if you step back, you think, wow, President Obama's team has not been able to right. tell that story. It was a bit of an indictment of the Obama machine. That said, I think that Michelle Obama was amazing, but, but Clinton did something. He said, I'm still the master. And when you see the essentially maybe a temporary alliance between the Clinton franchise and the Obama franchise, that's a very powerful machine. And when you're in, in Tampa, it, it was a mess. And you did see this antipathy that many Republicans have for their leadership. I want to play some of uh, the First Lady's uh, speech, and we'll talk about it. Here we go. Truth matters, that, that you don't take shortcuts people ask me whether being in the White House has changed my husband, he, he's the same man who, who started his career by turning down high-paying jobs and instead working in struggling neighborhoods where a steel plant had shut down, fighting to rebuild those communities and get folks back to work. Because for Barack, success isn't about how much money you make, it's about the difference you make in people's lives. 
after so many struggles and triumphs and moments that have tested my husband in ways I never could have imagined. I have seen firsthand that being president doesn't change who you are. No, it, it reveals who you are. Wilmer, somewhere Ann Romney was saying, ooh, that woman is good. Uh, everybody was saying that. Yeah. And what's very interesting in the First Lady's narrative is that it was a consistent theme throughout the entire convention, throughout the speeches. When you listen to the Republican convention, they were off script. Chris Christie is, 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 is uh, auditioning for 2016. Clint Eastwood turned the convention into a Saturday Night Live skit. Ma Senator Marco Rubio, some people say it, that he was revealing his story, but also exactly. a lot he about was, him versus... Exactly. Right. Not, not about the candidate. But one of the things that kept, I think, uh, so many people in tune to the Democratic convention, first of all, the, the speeches themselves were incredible, but there was a consistent theme that ran from Monday through Thursday. I want to I wanna, I wanna get you... Go ahead. Let me just say this. You know, I find it amazing that you're going to try to convince the American people that the Republican convention had nothing to say. It was boring. When I made my comment that they did not have a, a love affair with Mitt Romney, there was incredible enthusiasm and respect and honor for this man. They want leadership. They don't want a beauty kind of test. They want substance. They but don't want the style. Problem. Here's the problem the, with that. Condoleezza Rice was very effective. Was. You, you cannot ignore that. She was only that one. Was you but can't you mention her. You can't. Amazing. You, you cannot. Can actually, actually, we talked about her last week. You, can, you cannot win. Well, it's very, very difficult to win an election when your narrative is the negative. We, yes. Coming out of the Republican convention, outside of Condoleezza Rice, we have no idea what Mitt Romney is for. We know what he's against. We know what Paul Ryan is against. When you listen to the narrative on the Democratic side from Monday through Thursday, you got a clear understanding of what the Democratic Party is about. I think most people in this country has a clear understanding of what the Republican Party is about. It wasn't and, articulated and, and last I week. I think it was well articulated. It depends on who was listed. Oh, no, you know what it is. Yeah, no, we what know what they're on. about. They're yeah. about the negative, not are about the positive. Are you saying the, the campaign is not negative? Come on, who do you think you're fooling? No, they what all I, are negative. That's not what I said. That's not at all what I said, and you know that's not what I said. But, John and Steve, when you check the polling numbers, Romney's negative numbers far higher than the yes. president's. The president's likability numbers far higher than Romney's. That plays a role in how people vote because when it, when it comes down to, if you say, I think both of you are alike, who do I like the most? Well, and also, who cares about me? And that's the other thing that polls have consistently shown, is that when people are asked that question, they may be worried about the economy. They may not be entirely happy. But the specific question, who cares about me, who empathizes with me, who will take care of me and my family, Barack Obama is off the charts, Mitt Romney. And that's the thing uh, that was uh, so effective about Michelle Obama, the First Lady's speech, is that she was showing you a picture of people who've struggled. Her father, right. that story, Barack, his single mother, Mother, the grandmother who hit the glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. When the Romneys, and Ann Romney in particular, talked about struggle, it was as though, uh, economic struggle, I know they have struggled, it was as though it was a story that had been told to them by someone else, not something that they had lived. And I thought that that's, that the Democrats really got that empathy uh, that I think bolsters President Obama's numbers. Yeah, hold, 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 hold one second, I want to play some of what the President said because it, it goes right into what you just talked about. We honor the strivers, the dreamers, the risk takers, the entrepreneurs who have always been the driving force behind our free enterprise system, the greatest engine of growth and prosperity that the world's ever known. But we also believe in something called citizenship, a word at the very essence of our democracy. My fellow citizens, you're the reason there's a little girl with a heart disorder in Phoenix will get the surgery she needs because an insurance company can't limit her coverage. You did that. You're the reason a young man in Colorado who never thought he'd be able to afford his dream of earning a medical degree is about to get that chance. You made that possible. You're the reason a young immigrant who grew up here and went to school here and pledged allegiance to our flag will no longer be deported from the only country she's ever called home. Why selfless soldiers won't be kicked out of the military because of who they are or who they love. Why thousands of families have finally been able to say to the loved ones who served us so bravely, welcome home. You did that.
Steve, the last time I recall any Democrat effectively breaking down the argument of we the people was Congresswoman Barbara Jordan at the Watergate hearings when she said, I wasn't included in the original document, but I'm now included in We the People. That's all I heard from many of the speakers there, really leaning on We the People. They want to expand the participants in the electoral game. That's what they did last time, and that's how they won the election. They're trying to reach out to confused Americans, stressed out Americans, and new Americans who haven't participated before and bring them in. You heard exactly the same kind of line, I would argue even more effectively, from Michelle Obama, uh, who talked about, I'm not, my husband's not just about Democrats, he's about Republicans. He's about the, you know, have, haven't decided and, and really trying to sort of create a much larger, larger tent. And, and to Armstrong's point, some Republicans did this in Tampa, but not nearly in the same level and degree that you felt throughout the Democratic convention. I was even stunned, frankly, that the Democrats, for the first time, truly make truly outshine the Republicans when it came to foreign policy and the military. That's a big oh, change. I mean, I was Huge. surprised by that. Well, that's because yeah. Mitt has no experience. And nor does Paul Ryan. Okay. And, and you've got a sitting president that has gotten Osama bin Laden and been through two wars. Hold tight one second. We're going to come back for the conversation.